I consider Jordy to be my best friend. Here for a trim? My hair does not require trimming, you lunkhead. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. Yo. Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds, and Dory is a Star Trek novice, and we are taking her on her first journey through Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, just before we get started, I want to apologize if it's noisy behind me. I have the air conditioning on, and there's a heat wave right now, so I refuse to turn it off. Yeah, that's fair. I'll give <laughs> yeah. you that. It's disgusting out. Yeah. <laughs> it's gross. Yeah, so today we'll be discussing the Season 4 episode, Data's Day. Original air date, January 5th, 1991. Happy New Year. Happy New <laughs> One. <laughs> and as always, we'll take it to Dory for the recap. Okay, this is going to be a classic messy recap because I wrote like, I want to say like eight pages or so. <laughs> I wrote a lot. There's a lot that happens in this episode. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. I love this episode but it is a mess and a half. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense, but I don't care. It's not really (laughs) about any one thing in particular, and that's kind of cool, but also kind of No, you know what it is? It's about Data constantly contradicting himself. He he monologues one thing, and then the opposite immediately happens. So that's what it's about. (laughs) Data's, it should be called Data's Opposite Day. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay, so um, we start off, Data is monologuing for fucking Bruce. Bruce (laughs) Maddox. God, I have so many enemies in this show, but Bruce is like really at the top. He's maybe not number one, but I I hate Bruce. I don't care that he's like on better terms with Data. I will not forgive him. (laughs) I'm, I'm a, I hold a grudge, so... And I'll only do this one time, but fuck you, Bruce. Okay. I got it out of my system. I'm good to continue. Okay. So Bruce wants a record of Data's activities um, during like a normal day, quote unquote, with particular emphasis on my perceptions of friendship. What? Okay. Well, so um, Riker arrives 15 minutes early for his shift and Riker says that he thinks the father of the bride would enjoy being relieved early on the wedding day. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I, they call him the father of the bride multiple times throughout this episode. I don't fucking get it. I know he, intru- okay, there's a wedding. No, there, yes, there is a wedding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much in this episode. <laughs> Listen, we'll get back to that. Okay. You know what? Uh, let me continue with the recap. We'll get back to father of the bride because I'm going to well, fucking it, lose my mind with the father it, of the bride shit. It's supposed to be an inside joke with that he's such good friends with Keiko and that like she's having him stand in for the father of the ride. I don't care. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh yeah. Somebody goes into labor, which is like really doesn't make any, like this, it doesn't matter. Even though they, this like birth, this like labor situation pops up throughout the episode a bunch of times. It does not matter. <sighs> okay. So we meet, Kiko, who is Keiko. Uh, the bra Keiko, sorry. Uh, oh, Kiko, wait. Mm. Okay. Um, she is the bride um, in a wedding that's supposed to be happening that very day. She has called off the wedding. Who is the wedding to? Or the who was she supposed to be marrying? The greatest I never, character I in history. The, the, uh, one, of my, one of my other enemies on my <laughs> list of this show purely be- for no reason <laughs> he hasn't done it well he ha- was his dad apparently is a little sexist or some or his dad is problematic because of an episode previously it's o'brien she's marrying o'brien i never would have guessed that like he would be getting married because she seems cool how did like she's too good for him i don't understand i don't get it they actually I don't get it uh, they actually it's- end up being probably the best interpretation of a relationship shown throughout all of star trek because it happens to end up being the most realistic one okay well maybe it'll grow me i like her but yeah what's very hilarious is that your view currently is 
the opposite of like what the standard view of it is is that most yeah. people do not like Keiko. Yes. Oh, she Though, seems fine so okay, far. They yeah. don't like that her, it's... but not because of this. They don't like yeah. her because of other appearances later. Because of okay, sexism. so maybe I'll. Oh. Classic. Because it's like, oh, she's so annoying and naggy and that shit. Mm, well, this episode she seemed fine. Yeah. Oh no, oh, she's fine. Um, I liked her hair, and she was like in a garden that was really pretty. So I actually wrote, O'Brien, WTF, good, call it off. <laughs> <laughs> so she's called off her wedding and uh, she, Data introduced them. And now she's like, Data, you have to go talk to him. And Because the two like, of them are best friends, which will never be mentioned again. And I'm pretty sure they never have another interaction again. Oh, yeah. I the, So then Data goes to tell O'Brien, he's like, listen guess what this will make keiko wait keiko. how do i pronounce it sorry you guys pronounce it two different ways keiko keiko, keiko? yeah keiko okay like cake with uh, an o cake o <laughs> cake oh uh, so data tells o'brien that the wedding is canceled uh o'brien is not happy about it also apparently Jordy's the best man like what okay Listen, anything to have more Jordy in an episode. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll take what I can get. So um, then we're picking up Ambassador to Pell. I'm sorry. There's so much that happens in this episode. I couldn't even remember what the fuck this person was doing here. She's saving so we'll the Federation. Put a, put a pin in that then. Okay. Well, the thing is that they never fully explain it to you because the episode is fully from Data's perspective and Data doesn't get all the information. Oh, okay, that's fine yeah. then. So she's just there to do something important. So then Data also notes that, oh yeah, this is like quite the day. In addition of the for the arrival of the ambassador, there are four birthdays, uh, two personal transfers, a celebration of the Hindu Festival of Lights, two, ch- t- two chess tournaments, one secondary school play, and four promotions. <laughs> Thanks, Data. <laughs> I had to know this, so now you have to know this. Yeah, I think the festival is... Is that Diwali? Or is that I would, something else? I would guess so, but I, I don't know. I don't even know if I pronounced about, that correctly. I don't know when the episode is supposed to take place within Star Trek, so it. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I don't think he specifies it, so it could be any time. He, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't say the name. Okay, so the, uh, <laughs> I know that the ambassador's robe, like the front of it, looks kind of like Darth Vader's outfit. <laughs> um <laughs> And, like, immediately, like, T'Pel's like, I want to speak to Picard. She, like, does not want to talk to Riker. Riker's, like, charming woman. And then Data goes, the tone of Commander's... Oh, yeah, there's so much voiceover of Data. I love it. (laughs) Data's like, the tone of Commander Riker's voice makes me me suspect that he is not serious about finding Ambassador T'Pel charming. My experience suggests that, in fact, he may mean the exact opposite (laughs) of what he says. Yeah. Irony is a form of expression I have not yet been able to master. Yes, Data. That's so cute. Okay. So, Jordy's getting a haircut, and... (laughs) by a bald blue guy and um data observes friendly insults and jibes in which then data calls jordy a lunkhead yeah <laughs> it's so it's great um jordy goes hi data and data's voiceover is i consider jordy to be my best friend and i fucking died <laughs> like what i love it i just ugh, the best then jordy goes here for a trim and then Data goes, my hair does not require, require trimming, you lunkhead. And Jordy goes, what? And Data goes, my hair does not require trimming. Jordy then goes, lunkhead? Data, I am experimenting with friendly jibes and insults. It was not meant as a serious disparagement. And then Jordy's like, well, just don't try it on the captain. Like, yeah, honestly, fair. So Data is, like, confused about O'Brien's reaction about the wedding being canceled. And... Jordy's like data it's just cold feet like the wedding will happen and you should like get a gift and I was like sorry do these pe- they mentioned get somebody like getting a gift last minute twice in this it's like this was the day of the wedding <laughs> yeah how did you guys not have gifts prepared that they would have to include I would everything yeah I would have fucking lost my mind like this this is not this is a situation that if it was real 
I would have like thrown up and just died. Yeah. Because of like how like how do you not have a gift for a wedding the day of the wedding? Okay, I'd like how- to point out that <laughs> from the writing perspective, they didn't know who they were going to like put in the marriage situation until pretty late in the writing. So, it's kind of part no. of the course because they weren't they weren't sure who they were going to marry with each other because they're like, well, we can't use the main cast. And then they thought, okay, well, we're going to get O'Brien to marry a um, uh, a character who uh, is set to replace uh, Wesley Crusher as the new uh, con officer on the bridge, which never ended oh. up happening. Oh. <laughs> so the, in the end, they were just like, all right, we'll make a new one. <laughs> um, so Data finds Worf in, uh, and he's like, oh, he's like a kindred spirit. Uh, they're both orphans that were rescued by Starfleet. Like, what a wild thing to bond over. But you know what? To each their own. Worf is also only that day looking for a wedding gift. And I'm just like, you guys. And then I was like, wait a minute. Is this the mall? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are we in the fucking mall? It yeah. is literally ship stores. <laughs> yeah. I hoped it you'd notice happened. that. We got to see the mall. We got to see the mall. We got to see the mall. It made me so happy. I was like, yes, finally. Okay, so now I paid very close attention to Worf's possible gift options. Mm -hmm. I went over it a bunch of times because I think it's important that we assess. All right, we see. So Worf is, I guess, at the replicator or a different, I don't know, a machine that that would, like, I guess, generate the present. Yeah, they're they're replicators, yeah. They're just Um, not food replicators. Yeah, so, okay, so this is what comes up as the possible options. So a, a chair a vase a thing that has like a spinning saucer thing and then then there's two glasses and then Worf stops on that and then Worf is like oh my parents I don't know he says my adoptive parents I'm like Worf can you just say parents my adoptive parents often gave these things yeah that's they they give glass items I guess and so then we get to see I thought we were just gonna like that was it just gonna give the like the glasses nope nope we're gonna see other options of glassware (laughs) apparently so we see um a punch bowl set i think a fancy shot glass on an octagonal platform i don't really know what it is that's just what it looked like to me a fancy spiral-esque design on glass flutes i don't know and then a thing a shape uh i wrote glass swan yeah boat flamingo duck i don't know <laughs> some kind of glass creature that i i could not tell you what that is it, it was it was I supposed no to be idea. like a swan i think it's like a bowl it's, that's in the shape of a swan it, it truly i could not figure it out <laughs> so then um data is like uh oh wharf shouldn't your gift represent um like yourself and wharf just like gives him the most incredible look just like <laughs> he should not be represented by a glass a ro- glass bird slash boat <laughs> <laughs> so wharf is like not super like into weddings but he's like human bonding rituals often involve a great deal of talking and dancing and crying like yeah i mean that's that's fair yeah that's accurate that's an accurate assessment and um i prefer when women hurl heavy objects at me (laughs) i read love poetry (laughs) oh so uh, Worf would probably really like throwing of the bouquet. <laughs> oh yeah, thrown for sure. at him. It's not heavy. Well, I mean, you get a big enough bouquet, it could be heavy enough. Um, okay, so now we cut to the pregnant lady for reasons. <laughs> and so, okay, but we're in there because Data has gone to see Doctor C to see if she would teach him to dance. Mm-hmm. You guys, fucking a yes, I love it. You so love the, the dancing funny thing doctor. Is like, yes, yes, I love. I want. I want more of the dancing doctor. I have good and news so, for you. There's more? Yes. No, that's not the good news. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't tell you if, if that's good news or not. Um, both Gates McFadden and uh, Brent Spiner um, did their own dancing in these episodes. <gasps> or in this episode. Oh, rather. I love it. Nice. Oh, I love it. They're so it great. It wasn't always the two of them doing it in the shots because while they had mm-hmm. doubles as well, they ended up filming both. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they used whichever ones they ended up uh, liking more, mm-hmm. and like the actors were totally fine with it. They were like, "Look, I'll do yeah. my own, but I realize that there are people who are professionally trained to do this, so let them do it too, and pick the one that you think looks better." The end. 
Yeah. So they were no, very humble fair. about they, it, which is good. They were great. Yeah. Um, but when Data asks Dr. C if she would teach him to dance, um, a guy walks by and Dr. C and the guy basically react to Data. Like if he, like if Data was like, Dr. C, can I eat a baby? Like what? they're so horrified by his <laughs> him asking her to like teach him to dance. It's wild. So then he tells, says, that she has a service record that says that she was awarded first prize tap and jazz competition St. Louis. Incredible. I love it. As a former dancer, no, I'm joking. Actually, I'm not. I took dance for many, many years as a kid. Didn't do much for me. I'm not a great dancer. I have no rhythm. I have lots of great costumes, though, from my many childhood dancing years. I would say good times, but it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, Dr. C doesn't want to be known as the dancing doctor again. I was like, again? I love it. I would only like her to be known as the dancing doctor. So she does the, like, zipper lip thing, which I, which Data then does it, which I found very funny. (laughs) I don't know why I found Data doing it funny. Okay, and then I wrote, I hope they show the dancing lesson. Oh, did they show the dancing lesson? Okay, so now Picard, back to, like, I almost said the main story. What is the main story in this? <laughs> Nothing. Um, so then Picard wants Data to do a tactical projection of Romulan deployments along the neutral zone. No specific area, which is like very weirdly specific, but like also not. Yeah. And Data is like, it is fortunate that I am able to perform my duties without emotional distractions. If that were not the case, a sudden course correction towards the neutral zone would make me very nervous and he stops <laughs> he's like monologuing which is great and Picard wants to know what is the current Romulan strategy behind the deployment of their ships in this sector uh, and then Data is like the ships are deployed to support a policy of confrontation designed to test Federation defenses along the neutral zone then he predicts that it's 90% probability that they will continue to support that policy like, I don't care whatever um, I say that, yet it is actually relevant. <laughs> <laughs> so I just was like, what the fuck's going on with this ambassador? Like, this seems sketchy as fuck. So then, like, Data goes into his quarters, and he goes, feline supplement 74. And I'm just like, Data, you're not going to eat cat food, are you? <laughs> um, I didn't know. Did we know that Data had a cat? This, this is point? the first time that you're meeting him. You do not get his name yet. Okay. Okay, I was worried that I was like, did I fuck it? I, there's like, there's no way I could have missed Data having a fluffy, adorable, sweet cat. No, yeah. this is new. So like, I love it. Yeah, and this I is just how they wrote, intro the cat. Like, yeah. I love it. I need to know, what's the cat's name? Should we tell I her? need to know. Is that... <laughs> it's not a spoiler. No. Like, it doesn't tell matter. Me. Okay. Tell me. Okay. Tell me. The cat's name is Spot. Spot? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> also, the cat's um, uh, the the cat's uh, uh, cat genus changes several times. Cat genus? That's yeah. not the word genus. I'm looking for. Yes, thank you. Uh, it, it changes uh, several times. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of a cat being called Spot. That's like typically a dog name. But yeah. listen, I'll take it. That that cat is so cute and fluffy. Mm-hmm. Like oh, the ooh. next one won't be fluffy, and then the one after that is fluffy. I don't know. It's weird. It goes back and forth. Oh, the cat changes? Well, yeah, it's played what... by many different cats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's oh. not, it's just like they get a different cat to play the role. Yeah, this was definitely the prettiest choice that they've made, but the other cats They're are cute so too. fluffy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'll like all the cats. So then O'Brien comes in. Oh, yeah, Data's at the computer. The cat jumps on his lap. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. Um, so O'Brien comes in, and Data has a whole monologue of, like, oh, when somebody comes in, you have to, like, make them at home, make them comfortable. So he keeps offering him, like, <laughs> drinks and a chair and a pillow. Yeah. I'm like, Data, holy shit, calm down. Um, and so O'Brien is asking Data to convince Keiko, uh, I thought mm-hmm. cake and then oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Keiko to follow through with the wedding, and apparently like Troy was not helpful. And then I wrote womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants Data to talk to her. So Keiko is like still like not into it, uh, and yeah, does not convince her. I don't think. Right? No, no, not yet. So then um, Data goes to see Troy and she is like the person that he like 
understands the least because she is a feelings person. And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this, this, uh, Troy, I will say this is like Troy's like, like some good. Uh, this is like for once. I don't want to say for once. I love Troy, but like a lot of the times, like her advice is like not the best. I, this is, this is, I, I take this. This one is fine. I will, yeah. I will allow I, I, it. I think she's right about this. Yeah. 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 So Troy tells Data to just like not do anything in this situation. Like, like don't get involved. Keiko. Yeah. Keiko and O'Brien need to like sort this out themselves. There's, there's not much you can do. Just like leave them alone. Let them deal with it. Oh, and then Data reveals that he thought thinks that maybe he'll get married one day. It's like, that's so cute. Data. Mm-hmm. I want Data to be happy. Oh, because, oh, it's brought up because, like, Troy's like, oh, yeah, marriage is, like, assuming you get old together, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Data's like, well, I would like to get married one day, but I won't age. Is that, like, bad? No. I think there is somebody out there for Data who won't mind the fact that he won't age. Yeah. Because he... I'm sure something... Because he... Somebody will come along. Because he has this line of, like... You know, I, I think I have a lot to offer a partner, but, you know, we won't grow old together because I won't grow old. And then yeah. Troy, like, sits down next to him and she's like, you're right, Data. You do have a lot to offer. Which yeah, I thought was it's really so cute. cute. It's so cute. Yeah. Okay, so now Data is called to the ambassador's room. And the ambassador is like, I require information on the ship's defense and navigational systems. Just like okay sketchy what and data's like uh yeah i have the same safeguards as the computer so i need to report this inquiry to picard and then the ambassador's like oh cool that's fine i just was making sure you you don't you can't give me that information i just want to make sure you're like yeah i I was making safeguards are working yeah it's that's great that's fine it was a test and then she's just (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. and then she's like okay data you can fucking leave get out (laughs) So then Data talks about, like, have, wishing that he had a gut feeling <laughs> to tell if the ambassador was lying. Mm. And just, like, but he's making a face. And I'm like, I think you got a gut feeling, Data. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I think you're good. Okay, so now, the dance. The dance lesson. I love it. Program Crusher 4. It's a recreation of where Dr. C had her first dance lesson. It's very cute. Lots of plants, lots of pink. Love it. So Dr. C starts with a st- stomp hop and Data just absolutely goes to town. Data is so good. I love this so much. But then the funniest bit is like Data's arms are just limp, but he just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks so funny. It's so good. So Data just suggests like, why don't we just like jump to the final dance combo? Cause he can catch on quick. So they start tap dancing. And I just was like, okay, I've been to like, you know, uh, few weddings in my time and i don't recall there ever being a (laughs) tap dance routine (laughs) so like maybe this isn't maybe maybe something else and then fortunately that does occur to (laughs) them at one point of like yeah tap dancing is like not (laughs) a wedding thing so um well it's like dr c didn't know it was for like data was asking for lessons for a wedding yeah so the, it, she tries to teach him to to da- what, slow dance. What is it? Waltz? I don't know. I can't tell the difference between the like slow dances. Yeah, whatever. They're it's all just slow, slow dance. dances to me. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's a really big mess, and like, but he needs to see her feet. Then he like gets a hang of it, and then she shows him how to lead, and then she tells him to look up. But he looks up to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. She tells Data to smile. It's horrifying. But then she gets called away because the fucking baby's coming. This whole episode is this fucking baby. Like, why? So then Data asks for a new dance partner. And it's this, like, blonde lady in, like, a long gold dress with an incredible open back. Mm -hmm. Oh, she also looked really bored. (laughs) I don't know what was going on there. Well, she's a hologram. um, Yeah. I mean, but we know that there's, like, the holograms can have a personality, right, Minuet? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. okay so now like back to the bridge so data is like really he really likes Riker. <laughs> he like Riker is really interesting to him he's like uh commander Riker's your easygoing manner and sense of humor is fascinating to me i believe it to be the one reason he's so popular among the crew it may also be partly responsible uh for his success in matters of love there may be a <laughs> there may be a correlation between humor and sex 
The need for more research is clearly indicated. <laughs> oh, Data, you dumb bitch. No, I'm kidding. I love Data. No. I was like, yeah, Data. <laughs> oh, you sweet, sweet angel. I mean, I'll help you research if you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Data. Oh, Maggie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then I Dude, think he's also, just like, my type, kid. emotionally unavailable. <laughs> And he's fully functional. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will say, though, for, like, Riker, yeah, okay, Riker's funny, sure, but, like, he's also, like, hot. So, yeah. Data, you might want to consider that yeah. Riker's hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then uh, Romulan Warbird is detected in the neutral zone, but they'll only, like, send a text. And he's like, <laughs> meet us at this coordinates in the neutral zone. Okay, what the fuck? Yeah. So then we meet Admiral... Mendek of the Devoras and there's like no protocol for this weird ass meeting and the ambassador will go to the warbird for negotiations what like I don't understand what the fuck is happening here it's so like it's like so loose that I just was like I don't even know like I guess I'm here for the ride but yeah. like I don't get it and I don't care like it the, all the all the like ambassadors done is be fucking weird yeah Okay. Oh, yeah. Then the background of the Rom- Romulan ship, it looks like, you know, those like static electricity things they have at the science center. Yeah. yeah. Or one of those lights that they used to sell at Spencer's. Yeah. That's what it looks like was there in the background. Like you touch it and it gets the little lightning thing. Yeah. Uh, incredible. Um, so the ambassador goes to the transporter. Oh, no. O'Brien's losing her signal. But I'm losing the pattern. Whatever. Oh, my God. The ambassador is dead. Like, okay. I don't care. <laughs> All the yeah, we've seen of the ambassador is like her be so mean to everybody <laughs> and so sketchy. Like, I don't understand. Like, so suspicious and rude. And I started, O'Brien is having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> now what a the fucking ambassador. bummer. Yeah. 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 He was, his wedding was called off and now he killed someone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, O'Brien. <laughs> So uh, there's, like, no malfunctions. There's, like, nothing's ever happened like this before. And I wrote, I think she did something. I Like, this seems very suspicious. Because Picard kept being like, oh, you should bring an escort. You should, like, have someone go with you. And she kept saying, no, no, I'm going to do it myself. So, like, to me, that was like, she's got a trick up her sleeve. There's some shady shit happening. So, yeah, so Mendek, the Romulan captain accuses Picard of setting up the accident because the Federation isn't serious about talking to the Romulans. ruh That's a mess. But, like, Data is on the case. And he just monologues about how much he loves Sherlock Holmes. Which, like, normal situation. I love it so much. But I'm like, Data, this isn't the time. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not. So then he asks to see he asks uh, Dr. C to see the remains of the of the ambassador that was found on the transporter pad. And Data goes, I could be chasing an unnamed, uh, ornith, wait, an untamed ornithoid without cause. Yes. And then Dr. Go- C goes, a wild goose chase. Well, so then gasp, the remains are not of the ambassador. There is a second transporter signal when the, uh, They were sending the ambassador over to the Romulan ship. The Romulans were the ones who had the second symbol. Gasp. Mm. Red alert. They're going after the Romulans. Gasp. A second warbird. Gasp. The Picard is like, we want the ambassador back because they think that the Romulans kidnapped the ambassador. And then Data monologues about bluffing and poker. And I'm like, Data, (laughs) I'll allow it. But like, what? And then gasp, the ambassador was a Romulan all along. And whose name is really Subcommander Selok. Like, okay. But the Romulan looks were good. I really like their outfits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're uh, some A-plus fits. Oh my god, gasp, another three warbirds are approaching. You guys better fucking jet right out of there. Data goes to apologize to Keiko. She tells him she's getting married. And he calls him the father of the fucking bride again. And I just wrote, poor Lol is rolling in her grave. <laughs> <laughs> Lol, I yeah, pour rip. one out for you. Oh, God. So now we're at the wedding. 
which is, I think, a 10 forward. Yeah. They just, like, yes. move shit around. Um, Keiko looks fantastic. So good. She's in, like, an incredible outfit. And then, like, everybody else is just in their, like, fancy uniforms, I guess. Yeah, yes. the dress uniforms. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, Jordy's the best man. The There's the shortest ceremony, which is, like, yes, good job. A short ceremony is, yeah. is always the best way to go. Then Data go, he goes... Uh, also, he I think doesn't... I think it was a white passing Japanese wedding, which is weird. Mm. But whatever. That yeah. doesn't... Those words don't go together. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like it was... Um, <laughs> like, like it was a traditional Japanese wedding written by a bunch of white people who don't know anything about traditional Japanese weddings. Well, I think okay. it's like a combination. Uh. I don't think it's supposed to be a fully traditional Japanese That's wedding. That's probably what it is. I think it's supposed to have elements because it's, you know, Keiko's wedding. I don't know if they thought that far ahead, but eh, whatever. It's not yeah. important. Mm. So Data says that he still doesn't understand human emotions like anger, hatred, revenge. <laughs> <laughs> but understands the need to be loved and friendship. I don't think revenge is an emotion, Data, but go off, I guess. Um, so then, like, Data dances really intensely with Keiko. It's cute. And then Picard goes to see the baby. And then... Okay, so I guess Picard likes babies, but just hates kids. Honestly, yeah. same. Yeah. I like babies, but like children, hard pass. Get your sticky fingers away from me. <laughs> so I've never related to Picard more. <laughs> and then Data monologues that he will continue growing, learning, and changing. The end. The okay, end. why? I hate that he's called Father of the Bride. <laughs> why? <laughs> I Because he's not... I don't understand. Like, I don't like this joke. I don't care if it's an inside joke. I was very confused. <sighs> well, I mean, it's pretty obvious that they don't mean it literally. Yeah, because lol would come, would haunt Keiko. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, this episode was wild. There. Yeah. Okay, but here's, here's, here's one of my favorite things about this episode. I really liked Data and Dr. C together. Yeah. Like, they were really fun. Their scenes were really fun together. I hope we see more. But because I want it, I'm going to assume it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> You're right. They were really I, fun. I, yeah. I I always thought they, they worked interestingly off each other. They're, like They're not a like a, a grouping yeah. that I would be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, put um, Dr. C and Data together. Yeah. But it was fun. Like, it was... I really, like, I loved their dance, the dance lesson. Mm -hmm. It was so fun. It was really nice seeing them dance. Just, like, it was a fun scene. Honestly, I'm glad we had this fun episode, even though it was a bit of a clusterfuck. I'll yeah. take it. We've had so many heavy episodes lately, or just plain bad <laughs> episodes lately. <laughs> so this was just a really nice, and I love a Data episode. Yeah, I, I like this episode a lot more than I remember liking it. It was really fun. Yeah. I laughed like out loud a good few times. Yeah, I, I, when I was watching this episode, I was thinking, like, specifically uh, about things. I'm like, oh, I, th I feel like Dory would be really excited about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dory was excited about this. Like, I thought that you, you would find it cute that uh, Data considers Worf a kindred spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did like that. We got Aww. to see them all. Yes, we got to see them. Yes, Finally. Them all. Yeah. And the reveal and of, of the cat. Yes, the cat, A+. Plus. Yeah. The mall, A+. Plus. Also, I love the fact that Worf and Data were shopping mm -hmm. of, like, all the characters. I love that it was Data and Worf <laughs> yeah. who were... And, and Worf, I love, is like, like, oh, yes, I've been to human weddings. Yeah. And Data's like, you ever been part of one? And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Worf. Ugh. One day Worf will be part of a wedding. I know it. Maybe he'll be part of Data's uh, groomsmen. He will actually be Data part of a wedding her. one day. <gasps> oh, cute. Oh, my gosh. Can't oh, tell Worf. you anything more, but he will. Oh, I'm happy for Worf. Ugh, I like when Worf is like... No, I don't think tender is the word, but like soft Worf. Yeah. <laughs> the vulnerable Worf. Where he's not just like... Fight. 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, he's always, he's so serious. So it's nice to see him, like, a little bit, like, softer. Yeah. So, fun background bit about this episode, since we're in background mm-hmm. corner for a moment. Uh, this day in the life plot was actually proposed multiple times throughout um, the last two seasons, and they decided to go with it uh, only partway through this one. So that's pretty cool. It didn't take them long to uh, to find some fun for it. Uh, they considered what? many different characters uh, to be the center of the uh, of the storyline, including Picard uh, and the ship. What? They considered <laughs> telling a story from the perspective of the USS Enterprise. How was that gonna... How? Do uh, you know what? The There's ship no wakes other up. information <laughs> on it. It's just what they were considering. How, I would love to know how they thought the sh- a day in the life of the ship was going to go. Yeah. Like, oh, I feel the shields are going up. <laughs> yeah. Cause, like, oh, I, is that a red alert? <laughs> I, I could understand. Like, I think it might be cool to do like a, a day in the life of like a room of like all the different things that happen in that room and stuff. Yeah, but, like the bridge or something, or the transporter room, yeah. seeing people coming in and out, or even like somebody who's not part of the main cast and who just like sees like the main group and is like, "Oh no, I'm just talking about fucking Reg, I guess." At this point, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's just Reg. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> no, I'm happy they chose Data. I yeah. I think that was absolutely the right choice. I could also love to see a day with Jordy. Yeah, we need more Jordy. Not enough Jordy. No, well, there's more Jordy good do you guys like this twist that the ambassador was um a romulan spy i'm i'm not gonna lie that part of the story doesn't flow particularly well i think it's a neat little bit of like star trek trivia but it's weird because in this episode it's a hey here's a here's a deep state um uh what do you call it a deep state spy enjoy and, and, yeah, and it like just, it, it it doesn't fit with the episode at all yeah in like this episode i'm like i don't care yeah 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 so that was yeah, actually was like, put in there at the uh, insistence of rick berman i believe um God, rick why yeah well because rick berman's a piece of shit uh, for other reasons than that, but uh, I'll get into those a different day. And this is the only reason why he's a piece of shit is because he put this, <laughs> this yeah, plot. He, this, he said the episode this, so. needs like an action or like suspense level B plot so that there can be, uh, well, basically so they can write it for TV because they're like, well, the episode isn't about anything. And I don't disagree with the statement that the episode isn't about anything otherwise because it's not. There isn't a... Um, there isn't like a, a what's it called? There isn't a narrative arc in any way, mm-hmm. um, because of how much it focuses on Data's perspective of what's going on. If it didn't focus on Data's perspective of what was going on, then you could write an arc around what was going on with O'Brien, but that's not what they did. So it doesn't really have a proper story without that, and that's too bad because that stuff isn't interesting. I don't dislike it. It's just there, and I don't care. But when it's on screen, I'm not like, oh, I don't give a shit about this. Fuck this. Um, I just, it's there, and afterwards, it's going to get referenced, like, one other time in a far better episode than deserve to reference this. But it's it's good. It Like, it's fine. I don't have a problem with the fact that it's there. It's just not useful in this episode. Hey, that's continuity for ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. Here's my here's my question. So like they so easily allowed the like ambassador on the sh- how like they just like did not suspect a thing. Would no. The implication okay, is no- that she's like a deep state ambassador who has been in the Federation for years and years. Yeah, that that she's been a spy the whole time. Oh yeah. no, 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 not that yeah. bit. Like that that I was going to say that's fine. Yeah. No, I mean like would that not make like the crew more paranoid of like who they let on the ship maybe i know they probably like oh that, that doesn't there's an episode that deals with that but i won't get into that Ooh. Now. um Ooh, okay. maggie you know what i noticed uh looking at the ambassador this time because i hadn't really looked at it in a while um her costuming is vaguely reminiscent no not even that vaguely re- reminiscent some of it is like almost directly referencing it um the kind of costuming that they put on romulans in the original series 
Yeah, and that's true. And I found, I found that interesting because I was just like, were they in the costume department trying to foreshadow it? Because we haven't really seen that many Vulcan costumes up until this point, aside they, from in the films. Yeah, they might have been because I was just about to comment that the ear makeup is more like the Romulan ears than the Vulcan ah, ears that they've done. Okay, okay. Oh, it could be that then. Mm, yeah. Thinking so, ahead. Well, they might have been foreshadowing it. Hmm. <gasps> I, I like this headcanon. Those ears. Hmm? I accept this headcanon. What would you say about ear story? Oh no, just you got to recognize your ears. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to bring up. I know you guys both liked Keiko in this episode, but I had a bit of a problem with her. Um, it the the way that she's written is in this episode anyway, um, like inconsistent with the way that we see her. Otherwise, I would think. Uh. But my my main problem with the way that she's written here is that she's written to be the the indecisive woman stereotype, I think, because mm-hmm. you don't really get to know her in the episode. And mm-hmm. then at the very end, she kind of changes her mind without telling anyone. She just acts like they should already know. No, it's it's not that she obviously told others like, well, we don't really see that, but the implication was that, like, um, <clears throat> Data specifically just didn't know yet. Okay. I think the way that they handled that was not great. No, cause, because you don't get to find out, like, what exactly her hang-up was and, like, how they got through it. It's, yeah. Yeah, so she ends up just kind of being the quote-unquote crazy and decisive woman. Mm-hmm. Um, that, as you said, that may not have been intentional, but that is unfortunately how it comes off. Now, I do realize that having come out in 1991, that would not even have been vaguely controversial at the time. No. So I'm just kind of looking at it from the perspective of the year of our Lord 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you. You heard uh, me. <laughs> the one thing, like, okay, here's the thing. Personally, I didn't have a problem, like, okay. It's a it's a double edged something, not a sword. I don't know. It's okay. a double edged I... blunt force uh, <laughs> blunt force trauma <laughs> instrument. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think Keiko says why she's calling off the wedding. She doesn't. So mm-hmm. in general, like objectively, like that would bother me. But once I found out it was O'Brien <laughs> she was marrying, I was like. No explanation is I required. Don't even, I don't even understand your <laughs> hatred of O'Brien. Neither do I. Don't I don't know. I don't know. I just, fe- I need someone to be angry at who's in there more. Con- like, listen, Bruce doesn't show up uh, very much. So I can't, I can't yell, fuck you, Bruce. And although O'Brien hasn't done anything, I'm still now holding it against him about the line from a few episodes ago where his dad was like, bad and he said something kind of i think was it misogynist i don't remember but he said something that was not great well, so he, yes i did dislike him before that but that doesn't matter yeah i think <laughs> o'brien he went like um can't remember the situation but it was it was something to do with like a oh yeah it was to do with Worf's mom he's like oh yeah she's always late and stuff and he's like well you know oh, women. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you, O'Brien. <laughs> Some women are not always late. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am, but not everyone. <laughs> I hate being late. Yeah. I have so much anxiety if I think I'm going to be late for something. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so, yeah, O'Brien, how dare you generalize <laughs> about women. <laughs> Rude. Yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> retroactively. <laughs> um, I didn't know I was going to... I knew that I was going to be mad at him. I just didn't know how, so I prepared myself to be mad at him. <laughs> and now I'm justified. <laughs> because he thinks women are always late. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So, Perfect. That's it. Um, mm. Now we are enemies. Yeah, he doesn't know it. And yeah, this is 30 years ago. But, uh... Yeah, uh, O'Brien, why are you making you're making your way up to the top of my shit list, my enemies list? 
from this show, and it is weirdly long. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man, there's been a lot of villains that I've been like, what the fuck are you doing on this show? (laughs) Ira. Um, (laughs) He's just the grossest. Oh, okay. So this is like not related to the episode per se, but a friend of mine posted on our Instagram asking, when do I, when do I graduate from becoming a novice? (laughs) (laughs) Because we're four seasons in. Yeah. (laughs) And when do I, when can I change our, uh, the description (laughs) of the podcast? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. When do I officially, what is the like What's above novice? That's not because you're not ensign. You're not expert yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> intermediate, I guess. Uh, like, oh god, like what are what are the levels? Like, what is? Because there's like beginner. Is that before or after novice? I think that's before. Because novice, I just skipped beginner. Then I just went right into novice. Yeah, that's why. Look that's, at me go. <laughs> when, when I finally like figured out like the sort of beginning spiel, I went with mm-hmm. novice because it was like. Because you're not totally, like, new anymore, but you're still relatively unexperienced with Star Trek. Yes. So now, four seasons in, almost halfway through mm-hmm. the Indeed. season. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, oh, stages of mastery. Here we go. Oh, okay. All right. The, the stages are... Because I was, like, Googling it. I'm like, what's the level above novice? <laughs> and uh yeah the stages are one novice so that's the that is the lowest then okay so i didn't skip anything yeah yet. <laughs> so stage one is novice stage two okay. is advanced beginner <laughs> i'm not sure i feel about advanced <laughs> yeah. beginner stage okay, three what, is what's competence so competence. <laughs> <laughs> stage four okay. is proficient and stage five okay. is expert okay i feel like competent would be my <laughs> level <laughs> Because I is a Star okay. Trek competent. Yes, because <laughs> hear me out. Okay, so like I remember like some st- like most like a bunch of stuff that's happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I can refer back to an episode. I remember the names of some episodes. I, well, I fuck up everybody's name at least <laughs> somebody's name an episode, but I feel like that's just that's not exclusive to Star Trek. I uh, tend to fuck up pronunciations of names. Ah. Oh, here's in general someone made up know. their own list of like talent levels or skill levels. Oh, okay, okay. So some of them are the ones we have, and some mm. of them are new. So it's a much longer list. Here we go. We start with newbie, then novice, okay. then rookie, then beginner, mm. then talented, skilled, <laughs> intermediate, skillful, seasoned, proficient, experienced, advanced, senior, expert. Okay, I've got another system. Yeah. What if we do baby, then rookie, then champion, <laughs> then ultimate, <laughs> then <laughs> I'm just doing the Digimon faces <laughs> and the metal version? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess I feel like I guess... competent is like a good place. Yeah. Uh, Cause like I. I I like Star Trek. Yeah. I like it. I'm, uh, as I've said previously, in it to win it at this point. Uh, I have a favorite character. I'm ride or die for Worf. Mm-hmm. I've made, I have lots of ideas for cross stitches, <laughs> which I'll probably make soon because I've been on a cross stitch fix the last couple weeks. So, mm. yeah. if I, well, okay. when I make my Star Trek one, I'll put it on our Instagram. Yeah. I think, uh, so I think when we s- finish season four, you'll graduate to the next level. <gasps> How does that sound? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what's, what's the next level called again? We haven't decided. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're going to customize it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just make our own. I just went from, uh, novice to competent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next level is, can remember shit <laughs> just, yeah. just like shows up still <laughs> that's yeah. the next level <laughs> yeah because i think uh. it'll be nice for next season to have like a you've officially graduated to this nice okay 
now we just have to remember yeah <laughs> i'm graduating this season <laughs> to the next level yeah <laughs> okay i'm down for that yeah um, I wanted to point out that I thought that uh, having Data narrate the episode ended up working the episode's favor by a pretty large margin simply because the episode isn't really about anything. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the for, for a change, the comedic timing in this episode is great, which is something yeah. that Star Trek <laughs> quite often struggles with. So uh, I, I like going back to this episode still to this day. It's a fun watch. Um, it's, it's never too serious, um, but it's, uh, it, it does take its own subject matter seriously. And I, I really appreciated that. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just realized though, because we had so much of like Data's dialogue, it is really neat to see like how far he's come in terms of like him discovering his humanity because yeah. it was, a, it was especially apparent for like when he was talking, when, um, he was like given the instructions and he was like. Yeah, like, it's a good thing I'm, like, emotionally, like, uh, not connected to this, or else I would have been nervous about these sketchy requests. Mm -hmm. And he does stop, though, and he's like, "Mm." Yeah. That's what, that's what I love. to me, that was really, like, big. Yeah. That's what I love about the contradictions of the narration versus which is what actually happens, is Mm -hmm. that, um, it's kind of sad, but it's also, like, it's, it's a neat sort of character thing to see that... Data is unaware of just how much he actually understands and how how much emotional intelligence he actually does have. Mm-hmm. He's still not the greatest, but it, but it's like he's far better at this than he gives himself credit for. Yeah. Oh, look at our Data growing up. Yeah. He's probably past competent at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. He's probably he's an intermediate. Yeah. <laughs> all right so with that let's move on to uh favorite moments and lines oh god there's like what aren't my favorite oh, no there are some moments i don't care for yeah but i really liked like data's like analysis of like the different of like troy and of Riker and that Jordy's his best friend <laughs> and that him and Worf are kindred spirits. I really liked that. I really liked data explaining like sarcasm yeah. and whatever. <laughs> like an irony. I liked okay, I think my favorite part okay, wait, I'll go back to my absolute favorite in a moment. Data's cat. I love Data's cat. Yeah. I like Spot. I love Spot. Um and I think like probably my favorite parts of this episode was the dance lesson mm-hmm. and data and Worf at the mall <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that was really funny. it's satisfaction. There was a mall. Mm-hmm. There was a mall. I've been waiting four seasons for a mall, yeah. like it's three seasons and 11 episodes for a mall. <laughs> Even though they are my... just like big replicator stations. I don't care. It's good enough. You're, yeah. They're shopping. They're shopping. They're shopping. They be shopping, and that makes me happy. <laughs> so oh. I'll, I'll take what I can get. I bet you O'Brien thinks women be shopping. <laughs> <gasps> How dare he? How dare he? We're, he thinks women are late because they're shopping. <laughs> yeah. How dare he? Oh, an absolute monster. Ugh. He doesn't deserve any gift from Worf and Data. Yeah. He doesn't deserve their <laughs> presence in both ways. He doesn't deserve them being physically there mm-hmm. and their gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think my favorites are, I like when uh, Deanna is like, I do think you have a lot to offer Data. I thought that mm. was just really cute. Yeah, basically every, all the data stuff in this episode is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Like, I just think it gives, like, there's a lot of, like, fun moments, and it gives a lot of insight into his character, like, how he feels about Worf. Because, like, when I, when I think of, like, Data's kindred spirit, I don't think of Worf. But it, it, like, when Data explains it, I totally get it. Like, Mm -hmm. why he feels that way. It is an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Jeff, what's your uh, favorite stuff? Um, I really like 
the completely pointless and absolutely worthless scene that Picard has right at the very end in which he's looking at a child. By the way, he hates children. Oh, the, in which he's looking at a child and says, welcome aboard. Yeah. That is incredibly cute <laughs> yeah. and also not something consistent with Picard's character and not something we will ever see again out of him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hear me out though. Babies are different than children. No. Because I like babies, no. but children, no. No, I will not hear no. you out. I won't listen. So like I can understand Picard like liking a baby, but being like a child. Yeah. No. Get away. Uh, I also really Shoo. liked uh they don't do a lot of tap dancing at weddings and Data's just like, why not? <laughs> 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 and I mean I- good question. Fun fact, I actually took tap. That was one of the many uh, <laughs> dance genres that I took as a kid. So, yes, I know how to tap dance. Nice. Well, that's debatable, but I know how to tap dance. <laughs> do you ever do it at weddings? Um, No, I don't have tap shoes anymore. I got rid <laughs> oh. of them a very long time ago. Well, but here's you can. the thing. Okay, here's the thing, though. If I am wearing shoes where you can do a little bit of, like, a tap noise in it, I will do a couple of shuffles just because I like the sound and, Mm -hmm. like, the feeling in your foot of, like, when you do a shuffle. It's a good time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So time to move on to predictions for the next episode. Mm -hmm. So the next episode is called The Wounded. And, uh... Jeff's going to take over for this one. So, Dory, I have extremely bad news for you. I'm so, so sorry. It's an O'Brien episode. No. What? (laughs) No. No. Wait. We just have... But he was just in this episode. Why do we need him to be in another one right away? I am aware. But but why? I am aware. Actually... Is the, yeah, the whole episode is is kind of focused on O'Brien, because okay, so here's what's going on: the Enterprise is tasked with tracking down a rogue Federation starship. Oh, O'Brien knows the captain because he worked <gasps> with him. Interesting. Okay, so my prediction is that. Brian gets fired and leaves the show. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, no, I know he stays. A Federation ship has gone rogue. O'Brien knows the captain. Okay, so I would, I guess, like, I think you said, like, he worked, they, I guess O'Brien worked on a different ship prior to the Enterprise. And maybe this guy was, like, not the captain on the other ship. Maybe he was another transporter room guy. And they worked together, but then he, like, graduated to captain. Just, like, one day I'll graduate to another level of n- t- Star Trek. That's quite levels. a bit up there, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they... Uh, uh, this isn't a spoiler or anything. I don't know if they explicitly mention this in the next episode. I don't think it's really been established yet, but it's something that, that DS9 goes into. Um, and it's something that Star Trek is, unfortunately, very inconsistent about. Uh, do you know about the military difference between... Uh, I- enlisted people and officers. Uh, like in general. Yeah, are you are you aware that there is a difference? Well, uh, I mean, they've graduated to higher levels. Well, enlisted. I mean, mm, okay, maybe not. Okay, so uh, enlisted people get into the military. They they have their own ranking system, um, which Star Trek doesn't really deal with. Uh, it, enlisted people are not officers at all. They can never become officers unless they go through uh, officer training, which is the academy. Oh, okay. Um, they do reference the academy several times with um, w- uh, w- with O'Brien, but the implication is that he doesn't go through the whole academy program. He enlists and therefore can get up to a certain point but he's never like a decision maker in in charge of, uh, what do you call it? In, in charge of like delegating, um, anything more than like basic kinds of operations. Oh, that's just for O'Brien though, right? Yeah. So O'Brien okay. is that they will reference this later on. I don't know if they get into it in the next episode, but he's an enlisted man. 
Um, they kind of make this a big part of his character later on. Um, if they do reference it, then that's something to remember that other people that he works with, officers that he works with specifically, he does look up to them a lot. Okay, so maybe. So then I would assume, ooh, maybe like the captain of the the rogue ship, call him the rogue captain, <laughs> he maybe like saved O'Brien's life and like maybe they're on the run for like, ooh, maybe it's a sketchy reason. And but but the got the captain is like O'Brien, you gotta like help us. You gotta like either like have the Enterprise p- gone in like a different direction, or like or um, because we have to do this thing. And O'Brien is like, yeah, I'll betray the Enterprise because I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, no, okay, I would assume maybe O'Brien is like, I feel bad about this, I don't know what to do, and then he has a, some kind of discussion with Picard about, like, uh, like, oh, how do you be, like, have your, you know, loyalty to one thing, but then, like, know that it might not be right. <sighs> Boring. <sighs> Why can't O'Brien just be, like, He's like low key the villain for the rest of the show. We just <laughs> the rest of the cast don't know. <laughs> he's secretly sabotaging for the next few seasons. <laughs> oh my god, he's the deep state <laughs> undercover. <laughs> no, I know he's not because I know he's in DS Nine. <laughs> God, why do they have to give us an O'Brien episode? I don't even want to make a prediction about O'Brien. It's so hard. I don't care. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I think that the like rogue guy is like wants O'Brien's help, mm-hmm. and he's like, "You've gone rogue, bro. You need to like turn yourself in." He's like, "I can't." It's like there was a show or a movie. It was an episode of Archer, <laughs> <laughs> where like the. <laughs> There was this guy who, like, went to, who's, like, in training with Archer, and I can't remember what the guy, character's name was, but he was voiced by Timothy Oliphant, and he was like, oh, he was the best, he was the smartest, and he, like, but they're like, oh, no, he betrayed this group, and then Archer the whole time is like, no, he would never do that, he, like, is too good, and he knows all this shit, he would never do that, he's the best, and then he meets up with him, he's like, oh, shit, he really did do that, he, like, stole the, like, uh, shit and like was making a run for it <laughs> alright yeah well, yeah. I'm going with whatever that mess just was <laughs> well if you'd like to see I'm guessing an episode of Archer <laughs> well if you'd like to see if Dory's correct watch along with us and join us for the next episode of Fully Functional a TNG podcast goodbye <laughs>